with the new technologies out there and stuff, you had mentioned the apps and, and everything else. How, is it, how important is that weather radio still uh, to this day? Well, the weather radio is going to be the fastest way that you get that warning. Uh, when we have a couple radios in the office here, and when I click on the send button to issue that tornado warning, that thing's going off before the apps and uh, you know what 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 we see going on elsewhere. So it's the fastest way. It's uh, it's another way to confirm what's happening. So um, I, I still highly recommend that you have a, a weather radio so that uh, you can get those updates. Sometimes if your power goes out, you might not be able to watch TV or um, and, and hear that. So the weather radio, you put batteries in it, and you're going to be able to hear uh, what's going on. So we have pretty good coverage here in southern Wisconsin for that uh, radio network, which is basically a weather service's own radio network that whenever we have a warning that your uh, receiver will go off with, a, with an alarm to let you know that that tornado warning or severe thunderstorm warning has been issued. Awesome. And... Uh... I think I may have asked you this last year, but I'm going with it again, that uh, um, I, it seems to me there's been a lot more um, severe weather major events happening during the nighttime. What would be your recommendation for those overnight hours and assuming 10 p.m. Uh, through the a.m.? Because you're, you, you still could have a major weather event, you know, pass through overnight. Yeah, that's actually when people are kind of at their most vulnerable because they aren't paying as, as a as close of attention as they might during the day when they might be able to look outside and see the skies getting darker. You know, a lot of people are sleeping in that time frame. So um, one of the first things we tell people is don't rely on the outdoor warning sirens to wake you up um, unless maybe you live right underneath the, the siren. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, because people have their windows closed and have their air conditioner running on a lot of those days where we see tornadoes or severe weather in the even, in the hour overnight hours. So uh, don't rely on that. Uh, like I said before, have a weather radio or an app. Uh, keep your cell phone by you if you have an app that uh, will go off uh, to let you know that that, that warning has been issued because that will wake you up uh, as long as there is a warning. So sometimes with uh, seeing tornadoes at night, we don't, we don't have spotters that will be able to tell us that those are going on. So it, it makes it even much more vulnerable. We're really reliant on what we're seeing on radar to be able to, to issue those warnings. So um, have something that will wake you up to take your go to your shelter absolutely and uh when you guys are looking at storms and trying to and, and get an amazing job for what you guys do and, and try to do to uh, prevent it but uh, uh a while back i know things changed for putting out warnings in specific areas i think there was a complaint a long time ago you put out a warning and there was the whole county uh just talk about that for for somebody who maybe not be familiar with that and your weather radio just setting it up you know and you think there's gonna be severe weather or not, and it's not gonna be near area maybe it is you know what i mean <clears throat> Yeah, so one of the things that we changed is to do storm-based warnings a number of years ago where we, it used to be that if you'd issue a tornado warning for the northwestern part of Dane County, everything across the entire county would go off. You'd get a, you'd get a warning for the whole county when a lot of people were unnecessarily being warned to take shelter. So we tried to, we, we tried to draw what we call these polygons or rectangles that will highlight the area where we think the severe weather or tornado is potentially going to be. And that helps out, uh, particularly in Dane County with the sirens, because where we write, where we draw that box, the sirens will just go off for um, any of those areas that have coverage with um, that area where we have the tornado warning. So you're not gonna get a lot of extra false alarms, we'll call them, for places that, you know, you wouldn't need to go and seek shelter if you're in far southern or southeastern Dane County for a storm that's in the far northwestern part of the county. Unfortunately, weather radio isn't that as advanced yet. Um, it's still county-based, so if you have it on, you get a tornado warning for Dane County, you're gonna, it's going to alert uh, for the whole county. But you can set it up so that just your county goes off, or if you want everything you know within earshot to go off the, the weather radio will do that as well so you can set that up however you would like it but it doesn't do the storm-based warnings on there yet no i think that's a good point to put out there that it you know it's still good to have that weather radio on regardless um you know you're you're making the best effort that you can to 
to alert people as, as best you can, and, and the technology is, gets better and better uh, every year. Um, a final question for you. We saw late last year, we saw a, a tornado pass through uh, the Madison area, east side of Madison into some prairie at the end of the season. Um, you know, it was a day where you weren't even expecting a tornado necessarily. Um, what's your advice for, you know, you're thinking severe thunderstorms are going to be coming through for the night and or the day or whatever the case may be and, and getting people in the mindset that, you know, just, you think it's just thunderstorm, but it could be something more, could be high winds, you know, what, what would be your advice there? Yeah, so those are the, I guess, the most particularly difficult situations for us um, that the Madison tornado day, the the, it didn't even have lightning with that storm as it came, or I'll call it a shower as it came through. It was only up around like 10,000 feet tall. So pretty, pretty small for what we would normally consider to look for, uh, for, for storms that might uh, produce a tornado. Um, it, it is, there are days where these, the weak EF zero tornadoes are gonna happen and we're not gonna catch them in time. Uh, we have been actually in close contact with Dane County Law Enforcement Center that uh, gave us a report of the, uh, that there was some damage, but they thought uh, from reports that it had lifted, so we didn't initially issue the tornado warning. And then we, as soon as we got another report, we issued the tornado warning. So in those situations, it's gonna basically be as we get reports and we get a, the warning out as fast as we possibly can. So that's most likely the case with like the EF0 type tornadoes where it doesn't show up as obviously on, on radar. So there, I, I actually was in the Dells that day and I have my phone set up to, alert me of any warnings for our service area which goes up to the Dells and uh I was sitting in a jungle gym with my kids and I, my phone goes for a uh, tornado warning in Dane County I'm, what is going on here <laughs> but that was that was my first indication that something was going on and it was on a day like you said that we weren't expecting it so having those alerts set up so that if you're not thinking severe weather and then we hear something and we have to quickly get that word out that's where that can really help you out to, to know that that threat is there. So our, our goal is to give lead time to everybody when, whenever we can, but there's cer certain situations where that's probably not gonna happen. I think it was a good eye opener and, I, and glad, glad you explained it and, and how it kind of played out, but I think it's an eye opener that, you know, we've gotta be on the lookout. And again, back to what you said at the beginning, having a plan in place, making sure you have the weather radio, have the app set up. Uh, best way to to be alert and when you know storms are coming in and again you guys do a great job of telling you in advance when you're expecting some type of uh, severe weather not just tornadoes could be hail could be wind i know we focused on the tornado end today but um you know you're preparing for anything and everything that uh, is coming for severe weather yeah and that's something that we're trying to more and more so do with our forecasting is to try to try to give more specifics and what we think the impacts might be from the weather situation on that day. We're, we're trying to do less and less of the melt your brain scientific reasoning for why there's gonna be tornadoes today and instead say, you know, if you have any plans from three to seven today, be on the alert for large hail or, you know, those some pretty, nat some big storms that could be coming through. So we're trying to go more towards that and working with people to let them know, you know, what could potentially be coming that day. Well, I appreciate the time, Tim. Uh, I Thank you to everybody there at the National Weather Service for your hard work and uh, from everybody here in Fitchburg and across the state. Can you get just make it a little bit warmer or, or just do <laughs> something? I mean, talk to Mother Nature, talk to that groundhog, whatever the case may be. Well, <laughs> well, we'll make it warmer for at least a little bit later this week. Um, but beyond that, I, nah, I can't, can't promise it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the time, the tips and everything. And uh, again, thank you for all, all your hard work out there. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right. Tim Halbach from the National Weather Service, Milwaukee Sullivan. He'll have a busy summer along with the rest of the meteorologists, but they'll do a great job. We know it. All right. We'll take a quick break. You are watching Talking Fitchburg.